Here's a somewhat more complicated example of solving radical equations. So here we have two radicals, that's what makes this more complicated. So we have the square root of x plus 2 minus the square root of x plus 10 equals negative 2. So remember, in the previous examples, we said that the very first thing that we want to do is isolate the term with the radical. Well, here we have two radicals, so what do we do? Well, we can actually isolate whichever one we want. We're actually going to have to do the process sort of twice. So pick one of the radicals, isolate it, and then square both sides. Then you'll end up with something, a uh, more complicated expression that only has one radical. Then you isolate that, continue the process, etc., etc. So which one do we isolate first? It doesn't really matter. Maybe isolate whichever one's easier. So in this case, I feel like square root of x plus 2 is easier, well, better to isolate anyway, because this one doesn't have a minus sign in front of it. This one does have a minus sign in front of it. And it doesn't really matter that much, but if we put the root x plus 2 over here, we're going to have too many minus signs to deal with. It's going to make things too crazy. Don't want to deal with that. So let's uh, go about it like this. So let's add the square root of 10, or sorry, add the square root of x plus 10 to both sides. So if we do that, then we're going to end up with the square root of x plus 2 equals, uh, let's write it like this, the square root of x plus 10 and then minus 2. Okay, now I want to square both sides. So in the interest of saving space, I'm going to write that as part of this step here. Okay, so if we square both sides, now on the left-hand side, it's going to be sort of like how it's always been. The square root of x plus 2, that quantity squared is just going to be x plus 2. Now over here is where things get a little terrible. So let's go ahead and switch colors and move off to the side a little bit. So, or let's move further down. If we have root x plus 10 and then minus 2, if we take that quantity and square it, remember that's the same thing as taking it and multiplying it by itself, which essentially is just foiling. So if we foil this, what a mess, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get, okay, well, what's the first? The first is going to be this term here multiplied by this term here. So if we take the square root of x plus 10 and multiply it by the square root of x plus 10, what do we get? Well, in general, if we take the square root of a thing and multiply it by itself, we just get that thing, but with the square root gone, right? Just like we did over here. Okay, the square root of x plus 2 multiplied by the square root of x plus 2 is just x plus 2. So similarly, this, uh, this here times this here is just going to be x plus 10. Okay, so that's the f in foil first. What's outer going to be? Outer is going to be here, the square root of x plus 10, and then multiplied by this negative 2. So that's what outer is. So outer is going to give us minus 2 root x plus 10. What about inner? Inner is going to give us this minus 2 times this root x plus 10. So the inner actually gives us the same thing again. Uh, minus 2 times root x plus 10. Sorry, I'm running out of room a little bit over here. And then there's one more thing. So that's foi. Now we have to get the L in FOIL, right? So the L is going to be minus 2 times the minus 2, which just gives us plus 4. That's not too bad. Okay, so if we simplify that, what do we get? We get x and then plus 10, blah, 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 plus 4 means x plus 14. And then minus 2 root x plus 10, minus 2 root x plus 10 means minus 4 root x plus 10. Okay, so we're just combining like terms, simplifying, etc., etc. So x plus 14 minus 4 root x plus 10 is what we get over here. What a mess. Okay, so x plus 14 minus 4 root x plus 10. Okay, so in some ways this is actually good. Why is that good? Well, now uh, we want to repeat the process, okay? So now notice we have a slightly more complicated expression here, but it only has one radical. That's good. And now we want to repeat the process, isolate the radical, uh, get it all by itself on one side, put everything else on the other side, then square both sides to get rid of the radical, and then continue like we've been doing. So we're really just doing the same thing that we've been doing in previous examples, but we just have the extra step of sort of doing it again because we had two radicals. Okay, So let's go ahead and erase this side work here, and we'll continue with the problem. So anyway, going back to what we were saying earlier, this is good because now notice uh, the x's here are going to cancel. So we want to isolate this radical. So let's subtract x from both sides. So we're going to get 2 equals 14 minus 4 root x plus 10. Now let's subtract 14 from both sides. So 2 minus 14 is going to be negative 12. And then this equals negative 4 times the square root of x plus 10. Okay, now we could square both sides here if we wanted to, but I don't want to do that yet because we can simplify it ever so slightly, a little more. 
uh, let's divide both sides by negative 4. And then on the left-hand side, we're going to get negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. And then on the right-hand side, we just have plain old root x plus 10. That is wonderful. That is so much simpler now. So let's go ahead and come up here. So if we have 3 equals the square root of x plus 10, let's go ahead and square both sides now. So 3 squared, and then we have this quantity here squared. 3 squared is 9. If we take the square root of x plus 10 and square it, we just get x plus 10. So now this is pretty simple to solve. Just subtract 10 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 1, or negative 1 equals x if you want to read it left to right. So, but be careful, we want to make sure that this actually solves the original equation. Okay, go back to the very, very first equation we were given, the original equation. Plug negative 1 in for x, make sure this works. Does it work? Well, let's see. We plug negative 1 in for x, we get negative 1 plus 2. Oops. And then minus, uh, that's all under the square root, by the way, and then minus the square root of negative 1 plus 10. And let's see if, when we simplify that, do we actually get negative 2 back? Let's see. Well, negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, so this is the square root of positive 1, and then minus uh, negative 1 plus 10 is positive 9, so this is minus the square root of positive 9. Square root of 1 is 1, uh, square root of 9 is 3, so this is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Is that what we wanted? Yes, we wanted this negative 2 right here, and that's exactly what we got over here. So that's great. Uh, that gave us what we wanted, so x equals negative 1 actually is a solution to this, and notice it's the only solution, that's the only number that came out of this. So x equals negative 1 is the solution to this equation here.